In the last lesson that we did, we talked about how um, it takes all six pieces. We need the corresponding parts of the congruent triangles in order to prove that the triangles are congruent. And so we went through and we said, okay, all three pairs of congruent sides, all three pairs of congruent angles, therefore, since all of the pieces of this triangle are congruent to all of the pieces of this triangle or have corresponding parts that they're congruent to, then these two triangles have to be the same size because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. We did the same thing here. Well, what we're going to see today is that actually you don't need all six pieces. You only need three of the right pieces. Now, the three pieces matter. Okay, so in class, what I would normally do is I would give these three sticks to a student and I would say, build me a triangle. And so most students would come up and they would build that. And then I would give another student these same sticks and I would say, build me a different triangle. And try as they may, it does not matter what they do, try as they may, they are going to end up with the exact same triangle. It is exactly the same size. There is no way around it. Now, I didn't say anything about the angles, but the sides drove what happened to the angles. There is absolutely no way to make two different triangles when you have three sides the same. Well, there is a theorem that says this. It has a fancy name. It is the side, side, side theorem. The side, side, side theorem says that if you have three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle, then those two triangles must be exactly the same size, angles and all. And that's one of the things that we know is now because of the three sides being congruent, I know that these two angles are congruent, these two angles are congruent, and these two angles are congruent, okay? So the way that we would see that in a picture, this is one way, and I want you to get in the habit of marking up your pictures. Only mark one when it has a matching side. So in this case, <clears throat> I know that AB is congruent to ML because it says so. Those markings say so. I know that AC is congruent to LK. <clears throat> Same reason, it says so. It's given. And then BC is congruent to MK because it's marked that they're congruent. So since I have three sides of this triangle congruent to three sides of this triangle, I know that these two triangles must be exactly the same size by the side, side, side theorem. Now just to kind of further that, I took, um, I gave all of my students um, measurements of triangles. I said, draw me a triangle that has a side of four, a side of five, and a side of six. And when they did that, I gave them to all the people in the room and everybody in the room, without even discussing it, everybody in the room came up with exactly the same triangle. That's because this theorem works. We didn't just make up something, it actually works. When you have three sides of one triangle con congruent to three sides of another triangle, without knowing the angles, you will automatically end up with the same size triangles. Okay, now there's another one. I also gave them two sides. I said, okay, this side is, um, I can't tell what it says. This side is eight inches and this side is six inches. And I want a 55 degree angle in, now notice where it is. I only gave them this side in black, this side in black, and this angle. This angle is called an N to congruent sides. Okay, notice that when I draw in the arc of the angle, the arc touches the two sides that you were given. Now I know there's another side and there's two other angles, but I didn't give anybody those. I just gave them these and then they had to automatically draw in the other third side to connect these measurements and these measurements. Now look what happened. Everybody in the room ended up giving me the exact same size triangle. Okay, now what that means is there's a theorem that says if two sides and the included angle, that's the important part. We'll show what happens when the angle is not included. When the included angle is in between the two sides of one triangle and the included angle is in between two congruent sides of the other triangle, then we have two triangles that are congruent. That is called the side angle side theorem. Notice that the A is in between the two S's. Just like the angle 
here is in between the two sides. So I have these two sides congruent to these two sides. I have this angle congruent to this angle. Angle C is congruent to angle Z. Since I have those, look at what that looks like, right? It looks like this. Here's my two sides, and here is the angle that I know. Notice that this, the angle arcs from those two sides. Let's name these just so you can see it. Segment AC, segment BC, and angle C. Do you notice how they all have a C in them? Okay, that means that the angle is included. If you draw in the arc, it is included. Here is an example of two sides. If I took the two sticks, like I said earlier, and I think if, if I gave everybody a blue stick and a brown stick, and I said, hold those at this angle right here, we would all be forced to go grab the same size stick to connect from here to here, right? It would be uh, kind of like that yellow one, maybe the purple one. Um, but we would all be forced to grab the same size stick because this angle locks it into place. Notice that it doesn't move, right? When I hold this, these two sticks with that angle in place, that angle locks this stick, these two, the blue stick and the brown stick, it locks them in place. That's why side angle side works because it forces us to have to use the same length here. Now, what happens when the angle is not included, okay? When it is not included, here's what happens. If I start with these original sides, in fact, I started with <clears throat> this side and this side. I said I want a side that's 5 and a side that's 7. And I want this 40 degree angle, but I want the 40 degree angle to be over here. Okay, not included. So I had this side, and I had this side, and I had this angle. Look at the difference. The other one looked like this. Okay, with the angle tucked down there in the middle, in between the two sides. This one has that angle over to the side. Let me show you. It looks like this. Pull this up a little bit. It looks like this. So this angle right here, is not included. This angle is included. Look at what the difference is. When I hold this one, right, it looks like this, and the, these two sides don't move because they are locked down by this angle. In this case, though, look what happens. If I hold it by the angle, look at this. See how that can move? So this one it doesn't decide. This one, you don't have any choice. It has to be this length. This one, you've got some options. You can let it be acute, and you can connect a stick right here like that, or you can open it up wide, and you can connect a longer stick like this and make it be obtuse. That's what this is showing. It's showing that you can open it up um, like this and make it acute, or you can open it up like this and make it obtuse. When it's not included, there is no guarantee that you're going to get the same size triangles. In fact, let me show you. I gave everybody the same measurements, <clears throat> okay? These two sides have the same measurement. These two sides have the same measurement. And these two angles have the same measurement. So everybody had the exact same measures, but look what happens. I got two different size triangles. So side, side, angle, where the angle is not included. Notice, look at the A sitting out here on the end of all the letters. It's an S and an S and then an A versus a um, S A S, right? So we don't say bad words in geometry, forwards or backwards. That's the way to remember that this one doesn't work, right? When the angle is over here to the side, to the side of the side that I gave you, and the side that I gave you. Not the, I know that there are three sides. You can't look at that. Just look at the three sides that I have information on. You don't get congruent triangles, so that doesn't work. That's going to be the hardest part to keep up with. However, there is one situation, right? But there is one situation. So look here. I gave them this side, this side, and this angle. So why do you think then that in this case I ended up getting all the same size triangles? When I didn't, when I just gave them some random a 40 degree angle, I got two different size triangles. But in this case, I got the same angle. Well, 
The reason is because of this right angle. This right angle forces this angle to have to be a particular size, this angle right here, and this length has to be a particular length. So that is the only case where we can take an SSA and make it valid and useful, but we still don't report that it's SSA. We have to use it as hypotenuse leg, H. L. This is our HL theorem. If you have, so if you're doing a problem and it is you come up with side side angle and you're like, but that doesn't work, then always double check is it a right triangle? Because if it's a right triangle, then you can use hypotenuse legs. So take a look at this. We have BC is congruent to EF, we have AC is congruent to DF. And we have that angle B is congruent to angle E because all right angles are congruent. Now in that case, when you first look at it, you're like, well, that's side side angle. And that angle is not included between those two sides. It's not anchored down by those two sides, right? You have this situation here instead of this situation here. They're different, okay? So that's SSA, which I'm not allowed to do. But this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and this is the leg of a right triangle. Therefore, I can use HL. You have to have a right triangle in order to have a hypotenuse. Otherwise, HL, can't, you can't use it. Okay, so let's look at some um, problems that have to do with this. Again, you need a um, highlighter or colored pens or something because it really helps everything pop out so that you can see it really well and understand um, what the things are. Now, there are two ways that we can know that some things are congruent. So we're going to talk about those. Um, so let's look and first you start, always start with what you know. What have you been given? We want to decide are the triangles congruent and if so, why are they and, can, can, and then complete the congruent statement. So I know that DG is congruent to HK. I know that FD is congruent to JH and I know that FG is congruent to JK all because I was given that, okay? Then are the triangles congruent? Well, I have a side, a side, and a side. Well, we know that, yes, I can prove that triangles are congruent by the side, side, side theorem. And so, yes, those two triangles are congruent. Okay, which two triangles? F, D, G is congruent to J, H, K. Pay attention to the way the marks are. F is between the two and the three. J is between the one the sides that are marked two and three. And so you want to go by how they're marked. Now, you do not know that these are right angles, so don't even go there unless you can give me a valid reason that it is. You can't say just because it looks like it. Now in two, um, notice that we have two triangles that are back to back. This brings up the reflexive property. Anytime you have two triangles that share a side or an angle, you're going to use the reflexive property. It's going to be one of those things that you use a lot. So remember that because the reflexive property is like your reflection. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself. The reflexive property means that something is equal to itself. So I'm going to mark up this bottom triangle. I know that AD is congruent to BC because 7 and 7 are equal to each other. I know that AC is congruent to itself. The AC that belongs to the bottom triangle is the same as the AC that belongs to the top triangle. But then I run into a problem. I notice that CD is 4 and AB is 3. So I have two sides. That's it. And I don't have any way to know anything about the angles. Therefore, I cannot say that these triangles are congruent to each other. Okay, so there's no reason and there's no congruent statement. If they're not congruent, then don't say a triangle is congruent to a triangle. They can't be. Okay, now in number three, number three creates some complications because it's an isosceles triangle. So I want you to put isosceles triangles on the back burner unless you absolutely need them. We want to go with the easiest thing that we can do. We want to go with our most straightforward, what's the first thing that you see. We always start with the things that we know, okay? We always start with what has been labeled. AD is congruent to DC because it's marked that way. AB is congruent to BC because it's marked that way. Now, we're out of sides and we're out of anything else, so let's go to the most obvious thing. 
okay? Now, there are a lot of options here, but again, stay away from isosceles just to make life a little bit easier when you're doing proofs. We know that BD is congruent to BD because the BD belongs to the triangle on the left and BD belongs to the triangle on the right. And it doesn't change size as it belongs to both pieces. So BD is congruent to BD. That is called the reflexive property. Okay, we're going to use that a lot, so don't forget it. Now, as soon as you have three pieces that are useful to you, you can stop. Yes, these triangles are congruent, and they're congruent because of the side, side, side theorem. I have three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle. Then my congruent statement would be A, B, D is congruent to C, B, D. Now, if you think you understand, <clears throat> pause the video, go ahead, and start working the rest of the problems. Maybe come back and check after six and see if you got them right, just to make sure that you're on the right track. But we're going to continue. Try them if you want to do them on your own. So four, we always start with what we know. I know that AB is congruent to CD. I know that BC is congruent to AD. And then I'm stuck. I don't know anything about the angles. There's no reason for me to, but I always look for that reflexive property when there's a side that's shared. AC is congruent to AC because of the reflexive property. Now that I have three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle, I know that those two triangles are congruent to each other. Sorry, if I can get it to focus again. Okay. I know that these two triangles are congruent to each other, so yes, they are congruent. They are congruent because of the side, side, side theorem. And A, B, C, be careful here. So look at where A is. A of the red triangle. A of the red triangle is between the sides that are marked with one mark and three marks. So find the same point, the same vertex <clears throat> on the other triangle. So that is up here at C. So A matches up with C. B matches up with D and then um, A matches back up with A, okay? <clears throat> so A, B, C matches up with C, D, A, okay? Now, number five, again, start with what you know. I know that angle A is congruent to angle B, A, C is congruent to angle C, A, D. These two angles here are congruent to each other. I know that BC is congruent to CD. That's all our marked pieces. Now we need to look and see if we can get anything else. I also know that AC is congruent to AC. So I notice that I have two sides and an angle. So my question is, is it side side angle, which doesn't work, or is it side angle side that does work? So the question is, which one is it? So the question you have to figure out is, is the angle included? In this case, the angle is not included. It looks like this. This angle is not holding this line in place, okay? It's not holding that side in place. Therefore, these two triangles are not congruent. Here's the situation that we have. It looks like this. Let me find the ones that match. It's gonna look like this. These two sides are congruent to each other. These two sides are congruent to each other. These two angles are congruent to each other. But these two triangles are definitely not congruent to each other. And it's because of where this angle is. If it was over here, it would be different. Okay, it would be included. It has to be included to work. So the answer is no. <clears throat> now six is probably um, one of the more challenged ones on here. So let's just start with what we know. We know that AC is congruent to BD because that was given to us. We can see that. Um, I know I shouldn't have marked those on both places. I should have only marked it on one triangle. So we'll just continue marking up here. Let me change colors. So I know that AC is congruent to BD. I know that's everything that's marked. I know that AD is congruent to itself. AD is the reflexive property. So it is congruent to itself. So then I'm looking, you do not automatically know that third side. 
Okay, there is nothing that says anything about that third side. It could be anything. If I just take two sides of a triangle like this, I could have any number of triangles. I could use any length for any sides, right? We know that there's a whole um, interval that they could be, right? They just have to be bigger than the difference between them and, and smaller than the sum of them. So I don't know anything about the third sides. Now here's what I do know is these arrows right here mean that these two sides are parallel to each other. If those two sides are parallel to each other, then alternate interior angles are congruent, and angle two and angle four are alternate interior angles. Those are not going away. You've got to keep up with those. That means that angle two has a match in angle four, so I'm going to color angle two. Now look at just the green. Notice where the angle is. Notice that when you draw the arc of the angle, how it touches both of the green lines, both of them. So the question is, is it side-side angle or is it side angle side? Because you know you have two angles and a side, or two sides, excuse me, two sides and an angle. That angle is included, okay? It looks like this, right? You have that included angle. It's touching both. It's taped to both of the sticks. So it is included, so it is side angle side. So the answer is yes, because that one works. This one does not, okay? And so yes, by side angle side, because that's how they are arranged. Then A, B, D is congruent to D, C, A. Match up the pieces based on their markings, okay? Now let's look at 7. Again, stay away from isosceles triangles. It just makes life more complicated. We're just going to stay with our basic stuff unless we just absolutely need isosceles. Because isosceles triangles creates like where you could have multiple different kinds of answers. Okay, So let's just start with the pieces that we know that are marked. I know that AB is congruent to AD because it's marked that way. I know that this right angle, ACB, is congruent to this right angle, ACD, because all right angles are always congruent. So I'm looking for my third piece of information. I have a side and I have an angle. Well, I notice that this is a reflexive side, so AC is congruent to AC. Now notice, I have a side and I have a side and I have an angle <clears throat> that are marked. Okay, I understand there are three sides and three angles in that triangle, but I have marked these two sides and that one angle. This one angle right here is not touching. The red of that arc is not touching the orange of this side. Okay. <clears throat> However, so the question is, is it side-side angle or is it side-angle side? Well, it is not side-angle side. It is side-side angle, which normally that would be a no, except this is a right triangle. Remember when we had right triangles, that worked. But it worked because I have a hypotenuse and a leg. So here it didn't work. There was no right angle, so I had to stop at SSA and I had to say no. 7 is SSA, but we don't use ever SSA. We use HL if it's a right triangle. So yes, the triangles are congruent, and they're congruent by the HL theorem which means that DAC is congruent to BAC. <clears throat> okay, number eight. These are all a variety of side, side, angle, side, angle, side, so that you can see the difference. So go by what you have labeled first. AB is congruent to BE. BD is congruent to BC. And then I also know, it's not labeled, but we know, so you can't forget, Vertical angles are congruent to each other. I know that those two angles are equal to each other because they're vertical, and vertical angles are always equal. So I know, so I'm going to color that one angle because it's vertical. Again, I have two sides and an angle. The question is, is it side-side angle, or is it side-angle-side? Side? Look at where the angle is. The angle of that, this angle, right, when I draw in the arc, it touches the orange side and it touches the orange side. It touches both sides, which means it's included. Since it's included, it is side angle side. So yes, these triangles are congruent by side angle side. And A, B, D is congruent to E, B, C. 
pay attention to the way they're marked, right? Angle A is right here between one and nothing. E is right here between one and nothing. So you label them according to how they are marked. Then the last one. Okay, again, we're going to stay away from isosceles triangles just to limit how many options we have. So in number nine, label the parts that you know, highlight the parts that you know. I know that BC is congruent to CD because it says so. I have a 90 degree angle here, which means I have a 90 degree angle right here also because they're a linear pair. And then I also know, it, nothing is labeled, but I also know that AC is congruent to AC because of the reflexive property. I have three pieces. I have a side, a side, and an angle, or a side, an angle, and a side. And I have to decide which one it is. The angle is tucked down in between. Notice how the angle touches both of the, the orange sides, touches both of them. So since it touches both of them, it is side, angle, side. So yes, those triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. And A, B, C is congruent to A, D, C. In this case, the A's did match up. You have to be careful, okay? So remember that in summary, right, your side, angle, side is going to look like that. And your side, side, angle is going to look like that, where the angle is off to the sides. Okay? <clears throat> so in summary, I can label parts congruent when I see, okay, in this case, when I see um, linear, or not linear pairs, when I see vertical angles, I can label those are congruent. Even though I haven't stated that, we know that vertical angles are congruent. I can also label parts congruent when I see the reflexive property or overlapping angles and sides. And we are going to use both of those a lot. And then the last one is we can also see um, lines that are parallel. When we have parallel lines, that is when we can also label angles congruent, like alternate interior angles, corresponding angles, and so on. Okay. So those three things are the things that are primary as far as getting information about triangles that are not stated straight up.